Hello again, today I thought I'd have a bit of a change of pace and show some cards I've actually bought over the past couple months and just go into a bit of reasoning behind why I'm buying them and, and why theoretically I think they're gonna increase in price in the future. So the first one I'm going to look at is this Paddy Cripps All Australian card. This is from 2013 Future Force and I paid $9.50 including shipping. Um, so the reason I bought that pretty much is I really want to get um, Have some kind of footing in Crips's draft cards and I couldn't find or couldn't find for a reasonable price his draft signature I think there's one on eBay for about six hundred dollars, but I'm not paying that much uh, So I, so I just wanted a draft card of his or a rookie card of his and I think this is the next best option because other than the draft signature, I mean, he doesn't have any other cards in the 2014 Select Honours set. And his only other rookie kind of release that you could argue that is his rookie release is 2013 Future Force. And the only two cards he has in that release are just a base card, which you can find every day on uh, eBay for about a dollar. I mean, it, there's just so many copies. I don't find it uh, that it's going to be sought after as a collector, but... The alternative is this one, and although it doesn't say draft or rookie on it at all, which I do think is not a great thing if you're going to be looking at it as a rookie card, but it is uh, limited in some at at some level, so it's not numbered at all. But if you do the maths, there's about nine hundred a thousand copies of these made if you uh, work it out from the release, and that's actually very similar to the draft rookies, so. For example, Dustin Martin's draft rookie from the champion set, that's not numbered either, but there's probably about 900 to 1,000 copies, uh, and that's selling for about $150. That one does say rookie on it, so I think is is more valuable because of that, but this is Cripps' equivalent, I'd argue, and if I'm not, yeah, if I'm not buying the draft signature, which, by the way, if you can, if you can find it for a reasonable price, price I would 100% buy that one first. Um, these alternate rookie cards are much more risky and they really rely on the the actual rookie card to go up in value hugely like there's not many players who have worthwhile alternate rookie cards to have one obviously being Dustin Martin and his would be his rookie um, rookie card from champions um, he arguably he also has the platinum draft pick which is an alternate and also his uh, his base from 2010 Prestige, which I talked about in my last video, which is now selling for about $25. So he has a few few alternates, but the the best one to buy is always the original. So I'd be looking for his draft pick signature at first instance. And if you can't find that for a reasonable price, people are going to be going to the platinum draft pick. So that's going to rise. And once that rises too high, which it already has, people go to the rookie card from Champions. And once that rises too hard, high, which for many people, $150 on the card is, is too high. So now people are going for the base. But when, when I mean, it's bound to happen at some point that Dusty does something unpopular or he stops playing as well. I mean, even last week he had a pretty off game and, and you can feel the hype die almost instantly. Not die completely, but just go down a couple levels. So as soon as that happens and, and some hype uh, decreases, the ones that are going to fall in value first are the lowest alternates. So the base will fall and then the rookie from the champions will fall and then the platinum draft pick and then the draft pick signature. Now I think Dusty's too big for his big cards to fail and I, I think the all the rookie from the champions, the platinum draft pick and the draft pick signature are all very safe actually. But um, something like his base, if, if he has a couple off years at the end of his career, um, people might not be looking for his base and that's why it's a riskier thing. Me, myself, I'm still looking for it and I think it, it's a good buy at the moment, but yeah, it's definitely riskier. So for this, I don't ever expect this to be like a $150 card like the the Dusty. Um, like I said, I bought it for about 10 bucks, so I just think it's good to have and it might have some grading opportunity in the future um, once the Australian grading companies kind of work work their stuff out, but I think it definitely could be a, a 20 to $30 card, but when you think about it, obviously that's not a big money gainer. I, I didn't buy it for the money gain. I bought it just so I had, I'd had i have some kind of uh, Crips rookie card because I wanted one for my own collection. 
The other one, which is very much in the same vein actually, is the Petrucca. I, um, I bought eight of these. These are from the Future Force 2014, so the year after Crips. And it's pretty much the same, exact same equivalent of what the Crips card is. So I paid $10 for the Crips and I paid a dollar each and I bought eight of these. So $8, that's including shipping. I think that's a, a good price. And I think this this could go the same way the Crips does because Petrarca only has two rookie cards, both from Future Force. So unlike Crips, Future Force is uh, Petrarca's objective or like unarguable rookie set. Like that's where his rookie cards are. So this is clearly his... Uh, third alternate card he's got his rarest rookie and then his second rarest as in the signatures and then this is his ne next best alternative so once again i don't see this being like a hundred dollar card in the future but i could definitely see it going from one dollar to something like the crips ten dollars within the next couple of years and petruck is the same like i just wanted some kind of rookie card of his so i don't uh, miss the boat if he becomes like the next kind of danger field uh, player and speaking of Dangerfield, that's the third card and the card I'm most excited about buying recently, and that's his gold signature. I already have the platinum, which is out of a hundred. This is the gold, which is out of four hundred. This is number two eighty seven, and yeah, I I just think Dangerfield's a really good buy at the moment because the hype on him is completely dead. Uh, people really aren't looking for Dangerfield. I think I said in a few videos back that his prices had gone down about 10, 20%. Well, now I, th I think they're down about 40% from where they should be. So I bought that uh, draft pick signature for $70, about $74 shipped, which isn't crazy low, but I think it's a very good price. And I think it's a really good time to buy when players are, are down a bit in popularity. And, and personally, I think Dangerfield's going to explode into the season, the, the second half. I think he's definitely the kind of player who will... Uh, use the time off to kind of motivate him and he'll really give it a red hot crack especially if Geelong are going deep into finals or uh, playing well at the end of the season so those are my three recent pickups and a, a bit of commentary to go along with them um, yeah the the takeaway here which I haven't followed myself is really I think try and look at the better cards uh, if you're looking at investing because even though I bought these and I think it's very likely that those go to at least five dollars a card in the near future and you go wow that's a five times return that's that's insane which is a really great return but then when you think about it i paid a dollar even if i get five dollars when you take into uh, ebay fees storage fees as in i'm gonna have to put them in sleeves and, and probably top loaders uh, to send off and then postage i probably only be making two, three dollars a card times eight, that's like 15 bucks. So it, it, you don't really buy things, well, I don't really buy things like this for um, kind of like investing or like making lots of money. It's more just having a, a rookie card of a player I think is significant in the game. Um, whereas with the danger field, although it's, I'd be buying the platinum first, but um, this is the next best alternative. And I think this is definitely uh, likely to, to hang around in the long term as a significant card so yeah that's all i've got today hopefully it was uh, kind of informative and i just yeah thought it was a good opportunity to finally show off some cards that i have and i'll probably do this in the future with other cards i've mentioned uh, in other videos so see you next time